everyone. My name is Shawnee Brady. I'm a youth librarian at the Crystal Lake Public Library. Hi, everyone. My name is Dawn Dvorak, and I am also a youth librarian at the Crystal Lake Public Library. And I am Ashley Tomney, another youth librarian at the Crystal Lake Public Library, and we are <laughs> excited to bring you our Library Tools for Back to School program. And this is to let families and students know what we might have to help you this year that you may not have been aware of, or maybe you forgot. And now this is one spot where you can see everything that we have. <laughs> I'm gonna show you some tools that you can use to help with homework. Sometimes you need help with your homework and maybe mom or dad is busy. So I'm gonna show you a great tool that you can use um, every day if you so choose. So you start out by going to our library page. This is the Crystal Lake Public Library. So you type in clpl.org and this will get you there. And then, okay, so I go to kids, I scroll down to research, and once I'm on research, I scroll down and after these cute kids, I see help now. And that is what I'm gonna show you today. Help Now is live, one-on-one -on -one homework help, test prep, tutoring, and a writing lab. Spanish language help is also available. There is a tutorial here that you can use if you forget what I've said, which is perfectly fine, but there, is, there are tutors available to you. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click on that and you'll see what you get here. So again, it's Brain Hughes Help Now and we have on here live tutoring. So there is someone that you can contact. A teacher is available every day after two o'clock. So right now, when we're filming this, it is after two o'clock. So I could click on this and I could put what grade I'm in. So if I'm a second grader, I would click on second grade. And then it asks what subject I'm having trouble with. So am I having trouble with math? or am I having trouble with reading? So maybe I'm having trouble with math. So I would click on that. And if I would like some help, if I would like my tutor to be Spanish speaking, I would also click on that. And then I could get live help. I could show them, I could ask them what I'm having trouble with. So depending on what it is. So I'm not gonna do that because I don't really wanna <laughs> bother them right now. But um, there's some great other things on here. Um, there is a writing lab. If I wanted them to look over a paper that I was doing, I could do that, but it does take them some time. It takes them about 24 hours to look at your document. And if you were to do that, you would also have to create a login. Anytime that I want them to contact me back, I would create a login with my big person at home. And they really just want to know your name and an email so that they can contact you back. So uh, one of the greatest things I find is Skill Surfer. I can do this any time of day. If I was having trouble, and or I just wanted to practice, I could do that too. Um, if I'm in a, a lower elementary school, I would click here. And so if I was having trouble, once again in math, I guess that's my area that I have the most trouble in. So I would click grade one math. And I could see uh, that I was, I can, uh, all different kinds of things. So if I'm having trouble with counting, with fractions, with place value. So for example, place value, if I wanted some help with that, I would look at here and they would show me some examples that I could use to kind of remember what my teacher said about that. And then they also have some practice that I can do with place value. So I can really test myself to see if I know what I'm doing after they've gone through the examples. So it's really a great place to start. I can always go back and click at if it, I was looking at a different subject. So if, for example, I was having trouble with subtraction, I could click there. And again, that would go through some examples that I could use. Um, I'm going to go back to home. I can also send the people there a question. So if I had a question on my math homework or a reading problem or an English problem, I could go ahead and ask them there. It's a really nice service, but again, they do need some time to get back to you and you would have to create the account. Um, one other thing that, they that is a really neat thing on here 
is they have a featured service. And right now they're teaching chess. So if you wanted to learn how to play chess, you could go here. Um, they do have certain hours that they use. Um, so you have to go Monday through Thursday from 3 to 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. And um, they would be there to help you with that. So um, these are real teachers. This is what they do in their afternoon. They're done teaching at school. And so um, it's a wonderful service that you can use. And um, I hope it helps you. Very good. Thank you so much, Ms. Shanine, for sharing Help Now, a homework help tool for kids and maybe their families that might need um, help helping their students. All right. So now, in addition to all the wonderful things that we have, like our regular books in the library, we also have some good tools for you to use if you needed to do like a research assignment to find more information. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Okay, so there are different ways that we can get um, information when we're looking for it. And one might be from a book. You could come into the library, you could use your school library, your library at home. So if I was looking up information on axolotls, I could use this nonfiction book, Cute as an Axolotl, and I could find some information about that. I could feel good about it because I know that the publishing company that put out the book has made good decisions to work with an author who's either really good at researching or is maybe an expert on this and they will have, you know, worked with the author to make sure that they're credible and reliable. And then the publisher also has a process that they go through of fact checking and making sure that the information is true. And then they also want to make sure that the information is arranged and makes sense. And in this case, it makes sense for kids. So I can feel good about the book that I check out and I get the information from. But you might not always have access to your library and you still might want to know something or you need it for your homework. And then, you know, you might have a computer or a smartphone or a tablet at your home. And so you might want to look up information online, you know, through Google. And so if I type in some results or if I type in axolotls and I get lots and lots of results in my Google search and I still feel like I'm, I'm really good and critical at evaluating those search results and I feel like I pick a good article on axolotls and I'm showing um, this article from National Geographic on axolotls and I feel really good about it, but I notice, you know, a couple of things just while looking at it before reading the information. Um, in the upper right hand corner, it says subscribe. And in the lower left hand corner, it says you have three free articles left this month. Subscribe now and get a free tote. So that tells me that they, um, you know, want me to pay the money eventually. And I may not always be able to get access to this um, or other articles from National Geographic. And then I also see this information about mattresses that has nothing to do with axolotls. And I notice that there's an advertisement. So they're giving me this information for free, but for now they want me to subscribe and they're allowing other companies to advertise. So the information might be good. There's just other things in there, you know, that um, makes me um, think about how I'm getting this information. All right. But I think what we have available from the library is sort of the best of both worlds the um, book and the online access. And this is an article about axolotls from one of our resources, Scholastic Go. And this um, Scholastic Go tool searches many different um, encyclopedias. And these are put together and they go through the same publishing process that a book does just the information's presented online. So I know that that publisher wants to make sure that the authors, the people who wrote this information are credible, reliable, um, that they have arranged the information in a way that makes sense to kids and that they have fact checked it. So I can still get to it anytime with my Crystal Lake Public Library card, you know, from my home. And so we feel like this is a great way 
to get information that you may or may not know about, and we want to show you more of these types of tools. So Ms. Dawn is going to show you our first tool, which is called Pebble Go. Okay, so I'm going to show you uh, Pebble Go, which is one of our great online research resources. We get to it from the kids research page by going to kids and then research. And we're going to scroll down past help now and down here to Pebble Go. So normally when you're accessing this from home, it's going to ask you for your library card. Um, but inside the library, it, it skips over that step. So here is Pebble Go. It is brought to you by Capstone. Uh, they are also a book publisher, just like Scholastic. So we know the information here is good information. Um, and Pebble Go is a visual encyclopedia. So kindergarten, first and second graders are all developing their reading and spelling skills still. Uh, so navigation is all based on pictures. So for here, for example, there's animals, science, biographies, social studies, and health. So if I click on animals, now it'll take me to other examples, um, and they'll get narrower and narrower as we go. So let's say I want birds. to about bird, learn about birds. Um, let's see other, other birds. birds. And then down Humming. here to hummingbirds. And as you see, it gets narrow as we go. It started out as animals, went to birds, other birds, and now hummingbirds. And that's how you navigate through Pebble Go. Uh, so as you can see, uh, each article has a basic simple su sentence, stru sentence structure and vocabulary. And as we click through here, um, each section is only a few sentences long, which makes it great for the targeted age group of kindergarten to second grade. Um, and one of the great features is that all of the information can be read out loud to you. So you click this yellow button. Hummingbirds are small birds and it will read the entire thing to you. So if you're still working on your reading skills, this is one of the, the great things about Pebble Go. Um, in addition, if you click through, you see some of these have red words, and that's because those are vocabulary words. And when you click on each red word, it brings you to uh, the definition of it. So that is a super helpful feature as well. And then another great thing is that all of the articles in Pebble Go, they have similar information in them. So once you learn a little bit about navigating through it, um, you're going to find the same information. So for example, all wild animals have information on their body, their habitat, their food, their life cycle, and then there's always some fun facts. Um, additionally, there's always these read more articles at the end of every article, and that will give you some other uh, articles that you can read, and these will always be articles from Pebble Go. Um, so they're always going to take you back to additional information in Pebble Go so you don't have to worry about it redirecting to outside sources. Um, then down here, we have some additional features. There's a basic, basic citation here that you can access. You can also uh, have these printed out uh, in a PDF form, either as the article or just that single page. So for example, it would, I could just print out the part about the body. There's also an activity. Uh, there's one with pictures, or there's one where you can just write in for more information. And again, this is for every single uh, article in Pebble Go has this. Um, so you can print them out and uh, work on um, what you've learned from reading the article. A lot of them also will have videos. So there's a video about uh, hummingbirds. Some of them also have listening, which is uh, you can listen to the sounds that the animals make. And again, this isn't for every single one. Um, but it is a fun additional feature. And then all the wild animals also show a range. So it'll show you a map and will show you where hummingbirds can be found. And look, you can actually find them right where we live, which is pretty cool. So let me still show you some additional site features. So up here at the top, you uh, have what's called breadcrumbs. And this shows you what you clicked on to get to this information. So it shows that we Pebble started at go. home. <laughs> so it shows that home. we started at home here. And then it went to animals and birds, et cetera. Um, birds. So you, that's how you can navigate through Pebble Go. It keeps talking. Um, so that's how you can navigate through Pebble Go. So I'm going to go back here to the home page. Oh, no, that's not. App bird. Pen other. Duck. Hummingbird. So I'm going to go other. back here to the animals, animals page. And if Re you come down here, we actually have some fun games you can play. Um, there are some matching games, some puzzle games, and just some other games to explore the content you've learned about. Um, there's also a question of the day that you can answer, just for fun, um, and it'll show you the survey results. So what is your favorite animal? I would say dogs. Votes. 
and it'll say, oh, 45% of the people who've answered this question today have said dogs. So that's just a fun uh, additional information. There also is this cool thing up here. Uh, it's a random article generator. So you just click on it and it'll take you to any random article. So this took us to skunks and you can click again. And now we're on grouse. Um, and now we're on a dinosaur that I cannot pronounce. Um, and so that's one of the cool features of Pebble Go. You can just go there and learn a little bit more about, um, about anything. Uh, and another great feature is here for the animals. As you can see, they also have it in Spanish, animales. Um, that is the only one that has it in Spanish, uh, but that's just a good thing to know for kids in dual language. Um, and I will say one of the only negatives for uh, using Pebble Go is just that the information is limited. So they only have information on these five topics. And as I showed you, each article is fairly small. Um, so there's not going to have every single fact you could learn about lions. There's only gonna have those specific topics and just a few sentences on each. Um, and not everything is covered. Like for example, USDH just happens to not be one of the things that is covered on Pebble Go. Um, but it still is a great source, uh, especially for those kindergarten, first and second graders. Um, who can learn through exploring through the pictures. I'm going to show you Scholastic Go. You will get there as a reminder, go to our website, clpl.org, hover over kids, and then click on research. Then scroll down, and this time I'm going to click on Scholastic Go. As a reminder, there's always tutorials for more information on using these resources. And this is the home screen for Scholastic Go. And you can see it looks much different than Pebble Go or Pebble Go Next. And it has a big, cool image here in the background and a simple search box. If you're ever curious what the image is, you can always click on what is this image. It will give you some information. This is about coral reefs. You can also click here to get more on the article or watch a video. And these change from time to time, so that's always fun to see what they have next. So up here in the top, they have something called GoTube videos, and these are just different videos on different topics that you could go into and watch. There's also links to newspapers around the world under world news. So you could go in and look around there. Um, under Atlas, there is a US map and then there are different world atlases that you can click through. Going back to the home screen, if I wanted to do a search, I would just type in a simple keyword search like I might do you know, in a Google box. And we are going to look for information on hummingbirds. And here is my results page. So as a reminder, Scholastic Go is searching several different types of encyclopedias. So it's giving me lots of different information. Right here it tells me I have nine images on hummingbirds. I could look at them all if I wanted to. I could see, you know, where they got that. And then to, to navigate, I would just use my browser's back button to go back through. I can see for articles, I can get 45 articles, and then they're going to list them here. There's going to be the title, the resource that it came from, and a little bit from that article. Now, I could limit um, or refine by the suggested reading level if I wanted to. So if I clicked on level one, it's not going to give me a hummingbird article and that's okay. I'm just going to go back to all. There's a four, which is, you know, grades 11 and up. There's a two on a moth and then there's a three and a two. It's okay. If you um, go into an article that's above your reading level, there are the read aloud options in here that can help you with that. And there is still good information in here. So it's worth checking out. I'm going to go into this um, hummingbird article here from the New Book of Knowledge. And this is, I have a video and I have an image on the right hand side. And then I have different information I can scroll through. 
I can also look at the table of contents and see the different headings. So um, maybe I really am just interested in the life of the hummingbird. I could click on that and I could learn a little bit more about that. Or you can just scroll through the article. To turn on the read aloud, um, it's over here. You click turn read aloud on and then you would click in the article where you want it to read. So I'll click there and then I'll click where I want it to read. A tiny hummingbird hovers in front of a flower. Its wings are a blur of motion. And that's how you can do the read aloud there. Again, if you are going to include information from this article in a research paper or project, you could, you know, copy the citation in here. You could write it down or you could copy it and paste it. And that's going to show that I access this article called Hummingbird from Scholastic Go, the URL I used, and when I access that information. So I hope you give that a try. And uh, if you are interested in finding some books, Ms. Shani is going to give you <laughs> a tool that will make that easier. Now to get to Novelist K to 8 Plus, which is what I'm going to show you, there's actually two different ways. So we've made it a little bit easier for you to find it. You can go under Kids and you can go to Books and Research, or uh, Books and Reading, sorry, <laughs> or you can go to Research. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go to Research because that's where we found all those other things that we were showing you. And you scroll down again, past Help Now, and here we have Novelist K to 8 Plus. And you see that there's also a tutorial here for you to use. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click on it. Now, again, this tool is going to help you figure out what you want to read next, or maybe just figure out what you want to read in general. So I'm going to go ahead and click on ages zero to eight. And you can see over here, this is my favorite part of the tool um, to use over here. I can find out what I'm interested in. So I can, I can also, I can go to fiction or nonfiction, depending on what I'm interested in today. So one of the things I like, I really like funny books. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to humor. And do I want funny books or quirky humor? Hmm, <laughs> that's a difficult one. I'm gonna go ahead and say just funny books. So again, this is limiting my choices. It's kind of helping me to figure out what I wanna read. And so hmm, I can start, I already have some things so I can see what I want. And does anything look good to me? Oh, I know that, oh, I love Adam Rex. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this and it says, oh, would be super villain, villain Dr. X-Ray swoops into a mall, threatening destruction. Oh, funny and destruction sounds perfect for me. So I'm gonna go ahead <laughs> and I'm, I could add it to my folder. So what does that do? So if I add it to my folder, that is a list that I'm making of books that I can go back to. So I can also click on this and there we go. And I can see if it tells me all kinds of information about it. It tells me um, what reading level it is so I can know, can I actually read this? But I'm always one of, if, if it's interested in it, then let's give it a try. Um, I can see if it's available at Crystal Lake Public Library. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And it says, yes, it is available at Crystal Lake Public Library. So I can go ahead and put this book on hold and then I can come into the library and get it. So that's the greatest thing. And of course, now that we have the drive-through, you could go through the drive-through, put it that way, or you could decide to come into the library to get it. So again, you could do this at any time of day and find this. I, like I said, I can also go nonfiction. So if I wanted to find different about, let's say, I think it went off my age again. There he goes. Um, if I wanted to find different things about animals, tales and tales animals. So do I want to know about um, facts? Sure. I like animal facts. I like to quiz my friends. So I'm going to click on that. And then I, got, I have some other books to choose from. Oh, you know what? I really love crocodiles. So I'm going to click on the crocodile book, Beware of the Crocodile. I'm going to click on 
my crocodile and put it in my folder. And then I'm going to check to see what I have in my folder. And I have Beware the Crocodile. So I can go ahead and print out my list later on. If I want to come in and I want to ask Miss Dawn to help me find these books in the library, I could do that too. But really, I could put them on hold and just make it easier that way. So however I want to do it, I can. So, and I know many of you like Dogman. So let's put in Dogman and see what we get for him. Let's see. We'll put in Dogman and we'll do a search to see what other books we can read if we like Dogman. So we see all, we get all kinds of read-alikes over here. These look like some fun ones. And again, I can click on these and put them on hold and they'll get them for me at the Crystal Lake Public Library. Too fun. <laughs> Back to you, Ashley. <laughs> Very good. Thank you so much. And what's great in the Rita likes is they'll give you the reason why they think you might like it. So um, that's always fun to see what they come up with for that. Um, I think Miss John is going to talk about um, some of the things that we do have in the physical library um, outside of books that you may or may not know that we have or may not have thought um, of using them for tools for school. Yes. Well, the first thing I'm going to talk about actually is books. We have these great books that are called Wonder Books. But what's so great about a Wonder Book is it has a built-in speaker. So it will read the book out loud to you while you read along. And you don't have to mess with CDs or back in the old days cassette tapes or anything like that. It's just right on the book and it's super easy to use. Um, so we have them for picture books for readers like this. We even have them for chapter books. This is a chapter book example, Unicorn Rescue Society. It's a great series. Um, it doesn't require any additional technology. Uh, there's also this great learning mode. Um, so after you're done reading it, you can go to learning mode and it'll ask uh, some questions based on the book. So it can help uh, build reader comprehension. Um, even if they can read the book all by themselves, the reading comprehension is great. There's also a place where you can plug in uh, headphones so um, they can listen to it in the car or anywhere else without disturbing anyone. Um, so this is great for kids who are uh, struggling a little with reading um, because it helps th them understand the words while they're reading along, or if they just want to listen to a good story. They're good, they're good for anything. Wonder Books, they're super popular, um, and they are a great special collection that we have at the library. Um, we also have a World Languages collection, if you didn't know. We have books uh, in both Spanish, um, and we have some books in Polish as well. This is a collection we're really trying to grow, so definitely come in and check out books if they interest you. Um, and this is especially useful for those kids that are in the dual language program. Um, uh, they can be building their Spanish speaking skills as well as their, or their Spanish reading skills as well as their English reading skills. Um, we also have these great things called launch pads. If you haven't checked those out, they are these great uh, tablets that are full of educational games and apps. And they're all centered around a specific theme. Um, and they are targeted to specific age groups. So we have ones for, third to, or for three to five year olds, five to seven year olds, and eight to 10 uh, year olds. And they will build your skills in whatever various areas. There's ones that target reading and science and math, et cetera. Um, and they're a lot of fun too. A lot of them are, are learning disguised as games. So those are also super popular. Those check out a lot. Um, and then finally, we have these great things called STEM kits. Um, STEM kits have a STEM, which is science, technology, engineering, or math themed activity including included in them. And they usually have a couple of related books as well. They're all packaged together in one kit. Um, they're either in a backpack or uh, in like a container that you can take home. Um, and we have 50 different themes like magnets and circuits, uh, robots, simple machines, planets, building, coding, all those great STEM activities. Um, so if your child is struggling with any one of these concepts, they can be super helpful. Having a hands-on activity can help with the learning process. Or if your kid is just really into any of those kinds of uh, like coding or robots or anything like that, they can also just, there are just additional educational opportunity around STEM. Um, so you can check those out from the library as well. So those are some of our great special collection. In addition to all of the books and things that we have that might be of interest to you uh, to help uh, your child this school year. 
And now we are going to Miss Ashley, and she's going to talk a little bit about our ebook resources. Absolutely. So we do have our e library um, that you can access, you know, anytime on our website, clpl.org. And just if you click on e library, and there are different services here. And there's a couple that I want to point out for you. Um, this is Tumble Books. These are um, animated talking books that you can watch. And um, there are a lot of picture books. And they also have um, read-alongs. So these are like longer chapter books, um, similar to the Wonder Books. This is just on like your device. So they will read the story to you and you will have the text in front of you to flip through. There are some nonfiction titles. There's uh, different videos, animals and nature, history. There is a language learning section with French and Spanish titles. And then there are some puzzles and games if you wanna do that. But they're really fun and they have them grouped into different areas. And um, we know a lot of patrons like this service too. So we wanted to let you know about Tumble Books. We also have our largest um, ebook and audio collection is our Overdrive collection. You can get through this from um, the website or you can use uh, the Libby app or the Sora app if you log in with your school credentials. And we're part of a group of libraries that shares resources. We all pull our money together. We're called the North Suburban Digital Consortium to give even more access to all of our patrons. I'm logged in. You may not realize, you may use this for yourself, but you may not realize that there's a kids and teen section. And there are all kinds of eBooks and audiobooks in here. You can go through and you can just browse by subjects. Um, you can limit ebooks or audiobooks. You can limit to type. Say, I want to look at comics and graphic books. And I can see that there is pizza and taco. Who's the best? And I can click on the um, cover and I can get some more information about it. I can read a sample or I can borrow the ebook. And this is going to let you know what it looks like. If you haven't read Pizza and Taco, I recommend it. They are two best friends. I can go back into the subjects and I can just limit to audiobook. And I could um, just do juvenile fiction. I could browse through and see. And I can always listen to a sample of the audiobook. Maybe I really um, am particular about the narrators that I listen to. So I could listen to a sample before I borrow it. Now, these um, books, you have to borrow one copy at a time. So if I borrow this copy, then Miss Dawn couldn't check it out at the same time from North Suburban Digital Consortium. Um, and so you can place things on hold and you can get them when they're available there. I think that's all I want to say about that one. Um, the next one is our um, eRead Illinois collection. It's a smaller collection of eBooks and audiobooks, and I'm already logged on. Um, it does have kids titles in here. You can go into browse by subject and go into juvenile fiction or juvenile nonfiction to browse what's in there. And then they're gonna give me um, different options in here or I can just scroll through and view them this way. Same thing with, um, you know, the um, Overdrive collection, I would, it's like one-to-one. -one, so someone already has the Magic Treehouse graphic novel checked out. So I would place a hold on it and then it'll let me know when it's ready for checkout.
So these books check out for three weeks and they automatically get removed um, from your account after three weeks. You can always return them early, which is nice. And then the final service I wanna mention is Hoopla. And you can get that with your library card number. And I, you have to create an account for it to remember um, your titles, what you have. What's great about this is you can turn the kids mode on, which is what I have on. So I'm not looking at all the other content in there. I'm just browsing, you know, in the kids mode. So there's going to be um, popular eBooks. There's John Jory's The Good Egg. And I can read this. I can borrow it right now. I'm going to borrow it for 21 days. And if Miss Dawn wants to read it, she can borrow it today at the same time through Hoopla because we have um, simultaneous um, access. So I'm getting a little red um, uh, message at the bottom of the screen. It says that I've already borrowed my six titles for the month. Limit on each cardholder's account for six titles per month. But it's a great way to not wait for ebooks or audiobooks for kids, um, especially if you have an avid um, audiobook reader like I do uh, who doesn't want to wait. <laughs> Those are some great um, tools for you. This might help with independent reading um, that they're doing at home. If you don't have a lot of um, things that are interesting for access, you can just um, jump on and use those materials or again, come into the library or place some things on hold. We're happy to do that. And, and we wish you a wonderful 2021-2022 school year. Happy learning and we hope to see you soon.